Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Siege of Vicksburg, Part 2 of 2, located in Vicksburg, Hines County, Mississippi, between Union Major General Ulysses S. Grant and his Army of the Tennessee, and Confederate Lieutenant General John C. Pemberton and his Department of the Mississippi, on May 27th through July 4th, 1853. I need to first make it clear that there is no way I can give a good recount of the battle within the time settings of this channel. I am happy to give you basics, but you'll need to find sources more dedicated to this very large battle with more than 100,000 men involved in order to get that detail you might hope for. After eight days of frustration, Union General Grant issued instructions on May 25th for his engineering corps to begin siege operations, the purpose of which was to stop reinforcements and supplies from reaching the city of Vicksburg. In this purpose, they would utilize engineers along with Admiral Porter's fleet on the river to perform the work needed. The Union forces began siege trenches and advanced breaching batteries. Over time, the Confederate ammunition supply dwindled and this forced Confederate General Pemberton to reduce his use of artillery and this allowed the Union artillery to become the dominant force. In fact, the citizens of Vicksburg began to dig caves all along the hillsides to keep out the worst of the artillery fire. On June 25th and July 1st, the Union detonated large bombs underneath the fortifications of the 3rd Louisiana Red End, followed by a rushed assault. Unfortunately for the Union, both assaults were repulsed by the remaining Confederate forces from Missouri and Louisiana pushing the Union attack back. Union General Grant angrily brought up more troops, and within three weeks, more than 75,000 additional Union troops were assembled. The Union siege began to have an effect by the fourth week, as citizens of Vicksburg were forced to slaughter the remaining horses and mules and give that food to the troops. Much like current times, price gouging shot through the roof and resulted in the poor citizens not soldiers that began to go hungry. Confederate General Pemberton found himself stuck between two choices on July 2nd. With food and other supplies gone, he could either try to break out of Vicksburg or surrender. Pemberton was sure that fighting was the better option, but eventually changed his mind when his generals made it clear that their men could not fight or march. Pemberton accepted this decision and arranged to meet with General Grant on July 3rd to discuss surrender. The meeting did not go well when Grant made the demand of an unconditional surrender something that Pemberton refused immediately. It took the rest of the night for Grant to change the offer and agree to allow the Confederates to sign paroles in a promise not to fight again. Pemberton took this choice and allowed a large portion of Grant's army into Vicksburg, where they took control. Union victory was at hand for the city. Overall, the Union had lost 4,910 men, including 806 killed, 3,940 wounded, and 1,640 missing or captured. Meanwhile, the Confederates had suffered much greater losses, amounting to a total of 32,363 men, including 805 killed, 1,938 wounded, and 29,620 captured. Meanwhile, the Union captured an additional 260 cannons and more than 55,000 stands of arms with over 2 million rounds of ammunition. The loss of these supplies alone would doom certain future battles for the Confederacy. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.